be like to be a wellness coach, practitioner, and entrepreneur? Now, this is an area that's attracting a lot of attention as of late. Several different types of people are flocking to this area as, you know, a side business or a full-on business. So I really want to cover it here on Life as a, and that's what we're going to do in this episode. We've got this great guest, her name is Sally Okada, and she runs a Japanese startup wellness brand out of London, England. And she's here to speak to you all about it in terms of how she got into it, you know, how she left this really successful career to chase after this dream of getting into this wellness space. Beyond that, she also chats about certification. So, you know, people like yourself can also find their way into it. Some really great stories, really great tips and insights in this episode. But before we get into it, I do encourage you to listen to the full-length audio version. You can find it right here on YouTube or wherever you access your podcasts. All right, well, first up, it probably makes sense to go after the definition of wellness. I mean, this word itself has been thrown about quite a bit, but I wanted to hear what somebody like Sauri herself would say, what it means, like what it means to her based off all of her experiences. So here's a clip of Sauri sharing that for us. My definition has also changed over time. Mm. Um, and as I've gained different experiences as well as education and also different perspectives. So I would say growing up, I always thought that wellness was really about your physical well-being. So what that means is how I look or what I put into my body, the exercise, the diet, that was really how I defined wellness. Um, and after a point, um, you know, I, sh I know you shared in your intro that I went through various eating disorders and that was really centered around this idea of focus on my physical well-being and it hit to a point where I was so unwell in the sense of beyond my physical and um, what I realized was you know maybe there is a different definition of wellness that is beyond the physical if that was the case then what does that look like so that's really where I became more curious about what is wellness, what does it mean, how, you know, is there different types of information that I can learn from? Because right now I am so unwell, even though I'm in the best shape of my life, I look great, I feel awful, there must be something off. And yeah. so now I, you know, now how I define wellness. So um, as you mentioned, I did go through a training in holistic wellness. And that's really the pillars that I use to help define wellness. So um, when we think of holistic wellness, it means that there's three pillars. There is your physical well-being, uh, there is your mental well-being, and there is your spiritual well-being. Um, and what I found really fascinating is that after I gotten better holistically, I finished my training, I then looked into my own culture of Japan. Mm -hmm. And what was really interesting was that there are so many wellness aspects that are Part of more than that physical you know we're very spiritual in japan and i honestly just didn't have the vision to be able to see it or appreciate it so to shed further light on a wellness business i thought it would make sense for sari to explain her own business which is called mogami wellness so listen closely i mean what she's describing here obviously has a slant towards the japanese side of things but i think broadly speaking it's going to give you this you know overview of what this type of business could look like Mogami Wellness is my the, my the company name, and the mission is really to empower holistic wellness. And um, these are really rooted in Japanese wellness principles. Um, Christopher, perhaps you know throughout your long time in Japan, but there's a lot of um, simple longevity wellness principles that I think are embedded within Japanese culture, which has also helped it become a longevity nation. And um, it is my belief that we can, everyone in the world can um, benefit from such principles. And um, our mission is really to help educate people with authentic Japanese wellness principles so that they can make, you know, tangible, actionable changes to their lifestyle because, um, you know, wellness is something that happens every day. Um, it's those small lifestyle changes that you can make. And um, that's really what Mogami is focused on. So to drill down even further on that last clip, here's Sari breaking down some of her service offerings as well as some of the principles that she does base her business around. Now, as I mentioned at the top, check out the full-length audio version. You know, Sari does go into a little bit more detail in terms of some of the other principles, but I still wanted to give you at least a sampling of what some of those are here in this video. Uh, no day is the same. <laughs> 
um, being an entrepreneur. I feel like I get to wear many hats and that's something that I've come to learn to appreciate. Um, but I will say, so Mogami, we are centered around five wellness principles and we really focus on delivering that in different mediums. So whether that be private coaching, that whether that be group events, um, you know, I think they're all rooted on those five. And so um, one of them, I think most everyone may have heard of, it's called Ikigai and it's the Japanese word for purpose, which I feel like a lot of people have seen um, and, you know, adopted in different coaching models. Um, but I try to focus on the authentic definition of that which maybe we'll dive into a little bit deeper um, and then the second one is body and soul care so what I mean by that is in Japan when we say we take care of themselves we have a kokoro which is our heart and then we have our karada which is our body and that's really the definition of a human in Japan so when we think about um, you know Mogami it's more like how are you taking care of your body and then how are you taking care of your soul and we have specific frameworks around that to help you you know and dissect what that means a little bit one of the things that listeners of life as a or viewers of life as a here on youtube really enjoy is this notion of pathways you know finding out how particular guests made their way into a profession or a business there's a lot of learnings along the way and sari does not disappoint in this sense her story you know speaks to notions of courage you know inspiration i think and learnings lots of self-reflection along the way and these are things that i think you as a viewer can take away you can take notes on for yourself so anyway check out Sauri's pathway i never envisioned that i would have my own company in the uk um i really didn't envision that uh i will say like growing up i was very much that um you know, perfectionist growing up, you know, I thought that I had to be this model student, um, not because my parents uh, pressured me per se, it was more really, it was coming from inside of me, because I felt that, you know, to be good enough, I had to get good grades. And I had to go to a good school that led me to go to the University of Virginia. Um, that was simply because it was the best undergrad business school that I got into. And so I went there and then I studied business. I studied uh, business analytics uh, and marketing. And so I didn't know what I was, where I wanted to go professionally, but a lot of my friends, uh, most of them went to uh, Wall Street or New York. So I followed up long I was like okay I guess this is where I'm supposed to go so I went to a market research uh, data company and then I was you know progressing in my career and so I will say for the first part of my life I really don't think I had a lot of intention or thought around my personal um, you know desire to do things professionally I was just doing things because um, I thought that this was what I was supposed to do you know in my job like okay go to a good school get a good job do well right. professionally. And then what, you know, um, in thinking of reflection points, I always, I was, um, I eventually became a director of customer success. And, um, you know, there was many things that I enjoyed of from that job, but I couldn't shake this feeling that I just don't think this is what I'm meant to be. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've seen people that are passionate about marketing and advertising, and I was not one of those people. And, um, you know, I had to really be honest with myself in that sense, because I really didn't have that drive, that passion. And I was missing that really, you know, I was like, you know, is this really what my life is going to be about? Um, and then on top of that, you know, I, I mentioned earlier that I was going through my eating disorder recovery. And um, I think that's really where I, once I got better, I was able to have more mental space to be able to think about what I really wanted to do. Um, and then it was also about understanding that I am already good enough. I, I don't have to achieve certain things to feel as though I, I, you know, I have to be a certain way to be good enough as a person. Um, but it's unlocking those kind of boundaries and then understanding, okay, if I fully accept who I am, which is a combination of being Japanese, but also having that international experience, how can I contribute positively to the world? And um, it was really through those connecting points where I did a lot of reflection. I yeah. did a lot of work on myself. And then I decided that I wanted to live authentically and in alignment with who I really was. And once mm -hmm. I accepted that, I realized that a lot of the things that happened afterwards, like moving from New York to, to London, to starting my company, um, you know, of course, it has its challenges, but I feel like I've 
sounds so much fulfillment because I, I could truthfully say that I'm living authentically as myself. So in recognizing that this program, Life As A, is built around, you know, this intersection between careers, businesses, as well as life experiences, I do want to speak to this point here in this clip. And this is where Sari's breaking down some of her experiences internationally speaking. She's lived in four different countries. And what did that amount to? Like how important, how critical was that in shaping her journey to where it's come to this point? So here's a clip where she's breaking that down for us. I've lived in, yes, I guess like four countries now. I grew up in Japan. I went to school in the States and then I worked in New York, but then I also lived in Toronto for three years. And then mm -hmm. I, and then I moved to London. So the UK. So um, I've had the pleasure of becoming friends and working with so many people from so many different countries. And um, I think that what I've learned is that um, fun Fundamentally, there's a lot of similarities between all of us. Um, and what I mean by that is we all eat, we all sleep, we all move. Um, these are all things that we all do every day. Um, but there's actually, you know, benefit to focusing on the details to seeing how can we make improvements for your overall well-being. And what I love about Japanese wellness principles is that it could be applied to anyone, you know, you don't have to have a lot of money. You don't have to buy these expensive programs to be able to start living a life that's well lived. Um, so I think for me, what I learned was that there's actually a lot of common practices across all different countries and different cultures. And so all of these principles that are rooted in everyday habits can actually apply, be applied to all the different um, people. And um, you know, in a world that sometimes I feel like is very divided, I feel like sometimes like my experience reminds me that we're actually very similar in many ways, you know, and I think that we could all, you know, benefit from sharing different cultures. And that's really what I what I hope to do with with Mogami. Okay, so circling back around to something I mentioned at the top, which is how you yourself can get into this wellness space. If you're so interested, if you have some sort of inkling or attraction to it. So here's a clip where Sarah is breaking down some details on the certification process. And I really found this useful. I think for a lot of people who are interested in this, just listening to her in these next couple of minutes is going to save you a lot of time and energy. So listen closely. Where is coaching, you know, how is it regulated or what does yeah. it mean to be a coach? Um, because I do think that it is a newer industry. So what that means is that, you know, perhaps it's not as regulated or there's not clear definitions of who can be a coach, who cannot be a coach. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, right now, anyone can technically call themselves a coach. Um, and um, so when I looked into it, you know, I first looked into the wellness experts that I was listening to. So I listened to a lot of podcasts. Um, including you know health and wellness so then i was looking into um professionals that were respected in this area and was seeing whether they recommended certain associations or different groups to for me to take a look at so when we look at coaching i think the most well-known one might be icf which is the international coaching federation so this is not beyond just wellness coaching but there's also professional coaching there's executive leadership coaching um you know these are all Part of ICF. So um, if you go to the ICF website, um, there are a lot of programs that are approved by the ICF. So what that means, it's ha it has met their um, certification and standard of programs so that you can be able to filter potentially programs that do not meet, meet that criteria. And then the second one is because I study holistic wellness, um, I looked at the uh, National Board Certified Health and Wellness Coach Association. So this is the um, main governing body for holistic wellness. Um, so the I did my training in the Institute of Transformational Nutrition, and I studied the CTNC, or the Certified Transformational Nutrition Coaching Program. Uh, uh, that's a mouthful. <laughs> that was a mouthful, yes, but I said yeah. it. But um, basically, it is a approved program by this board. So I can essentially, I'm certified, I am eligible to take the board certification for this. Um, so, um, and then the last thing I also did look whether they were part of the 
UK and International Health Coaching Association because I knew that I was exploring living abroad in Europe. And so I wanted to make sure that my certification was eligible for um, part of this association, which is the UK's um, only coaching, health coaching um, accrediting program. I think um, if people were considering um, you know, exploring this aspect, I would definitely make sure that you check out these, um, you know, accreditation associations, because there's always a list of approved programs. Um, and then look into whether it, it does hit the criteria that you're looking for in terms of, um, is it a, is it approved program by the ICF? Is it approved for that you could sit on the national board exam for the NBC HWC? Um, so that would be a few tips that I have. Okay, well, it's probably about time to draw this video to a close. But as always, I do encourage you to check out the full length audio version. There we dive even deeper into Sowery's business, into further tips and insights for those who might be interested in getting into wellness. We look at the future as far as the role of technology. She also shares this really great insight in terms of networking, how critically important that is and how we can actually go about doing it in a simplified manner. So again, tons more to check in the audio version you can find it right here on youtube or wherever you access your podcast but before we go i would love 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 that like or subscribe it's the best way to let this youtube algorithm know that this content matters that it should be put in front of more people so anyway i will have another video another profession another business covered right next week so don't miss it all right we'll see you then